name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I welcome you all today. We are watching on in the hospital rooms and present here or following online as we move into the ninth week of ordinary time and back into ordinary time. We ask God's blessing on all of our lives, no matter what time of the year we have. Let's thank God for the blessings he gives us in spite of all our troubles. Let's acknowledge sometimes our limitations and ask God's forgiveness and mercy for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God now have mercy on us, pardon our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that can harm us, and grant, uh, grant all that works for our good to come true. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, wait for and hasten the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames, and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are with these things, be <coughs> eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. And consider the patience of our Lord as salvation. Therefore, beloved, since you are forewarned, be on your guard not to be led into the error of the unprincipled and to fall from your own stability, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and to the day of eternity. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten, and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight, as yesterday, now that is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Seventy is the sum of our years, or eighty, if we are strong. Most of them are fruitless toil, for they pass quickly and we drift away. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness. <coughs> that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by your children. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Hallelujah. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of, your, of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Hallelujah. 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 On 
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. Some Pharisees and Herodians were sent to Jesus to trap him in a speech. They came and said to him, Master, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you are not concerned with anyone's opinion. You do not regard a person's status, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should we not pay? Knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why are you testing me? Bring me a denarius to look at. They brought him one, and he said to them, Whose image and inscription is this? They replied to him, Caesar's. So Jesus said to him, Repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. They were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That's good. That's good. You know, I'm, uh, I'm trying to track, you know, the situation about masses opening or reopening around Montgomery County. And two weeks ago, we were told where church services were allowed um, with a small number of people. And last week, we were told only outdoor church services are allowed. So I asked the pastor of Burnsville yesterday, and he says to me, we have not gotten any word from the bishop. They're trying to figure out exactly what Montgomery County wants because the infection rate in Montgomery County is higher than the other ones and they're, they're not as willing to open up places as the other counties in, in Maryland. Montgomery and Prince George's County are, are still the ones that are under somewhat a lockdown, but some things have opened up here, not, not for a moment. But, um, I think that the day will come, it, it will hopefully be in June, that we'll be able to have the Mass open to the congregation again. Um, we figure here, even with the distance involved, the social distancing, as I call it now, new, new words in the vocabulary, that we'll probably get about 20, 25 people in here. And that will more than cover a weekday Mass, which ran around anything between 12 and 16 people. Uh, so, so that would be good. And so I hope that we, we won't have too much long to wait. Um, it's kind of saying Mass without a congregation. I think this is the first day I've ever seen three people here. It's just Pedro. God bless Pedro. And he, he hears that uh, he cleans up all the vestments after Mass every day. But uh, talking to a camera every day for three months doing Mass is not the most inspiring thing for any of us. <laughs> but we've got to do what we've got to do, you know. That's the way it's got to be. Well, I was, um, you know, we were all appalled, of course, by what's been going on the last week, 10 days in our nation. And I was looking online, you know, my big cry yesterday, as I mentioned at Mass, was why, where are our church leaders in all of this? Why are our church leaders not saying more about this? Um, we've got the finest, some of the finest church leaders in the world. Where are they when it comes to this, this problem of, 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 you know, racial relations? Where are our where are? So I looked online and actually I realized that last Sunday Archbishop Gregory and the Washington Archdiocese did make a statement. It never got out. Uh, you have to look online to get it and print it. But it didn't get out to the churches and I guess it'll probably come out this Sunday. But I wanted to read it for you this morning. Archbishop Wilton Gregory, you know, um, and I, I'll read it for you and then you know, well, it, it, it sums up, I think, his feelings. and. I think it's a good, a really good statement, you know. Um, Archbishop Gregory writes, he says, My brothers and sisters, in astonishment we see the reactions of people across the United States as they express feelings of frustration, hurt, and anger in their cry for justice for George Floyd, whom we painfully watch being suffocated in front of our eyes on video in Minneapolis, Minnesota, this past week. Many of us remember incidents in our history that accompanied the civil rights movement, where we repeatedly saw black Americans viciously brutalized by police on television and in newspaper photos. These historic moments helped to rise our national conscience to the African-American experience in the US. And now in 2020, 
we tragically see these repeated incidents of police brutality against African Americans. We find ourselves in this national moment again with the awakening of our conscience by heartbreaking photos and video that clearly confirm that racism still endures in our country. On television and in social media, we observe an overflow of pain felt acutely in the African American community and shared by too many other communities. Moments like this cause people of goodwill who believe in the value, respect and dignity of every human life to wonder if and, if and how we can move on from here. The horror of George Floyd's death, like all acts of racism, hurts all of us in the body of Christ since we are made in the image and likeness of God and deserve the dignity that comes with that existence. This incident reveals the virus of racism among us once more as we continue to cope with the coronavirus pandemic. He describes it as a virus of racism. We owe immense appreciation to our first respondents who currently work tirelessly to care for us and to keep us safe. We remain grateful to them for their commitment to serve our community by protecting and saving lives. As a society, we must find ways to understand and respond to the pain of our brothers and sisters. We see racism destroying the lives of Jewish, Muslim and Christian people because of their religious and ethnic heritage. Racism triggers the divisive and xenophobic attitudes of nationalism. It targets people because of their cultural traditions or physical appearances and it threatens immigrant people who seek nothing more than the opportunity to improve their lives and the lives of their children. We must non-violently and constructively work together to heal and build the beloved community that was spoken of by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. In this Pentecost week, I join my brother's bishops throughout the nation and especially Bishop Hedda of St. Paul in Minneapolis in calling on the, the Spirit of God in a most urgent way. We must examine our own attitudes and actions in order to seek conversion from sin and turn our hearts to Christ in order to win personal and structural racism. Now and every day we must pray to find the strength to do what is right and just as we encounter our neighbours from a culture, country, religion, race or experience different than our own and see in them God's creative design. This moment calls us to be a people of hope that Jesus Christ created us to be in a world full of pain and despair. We pray for a new Pentecost, a renewal of love, justice and truth in our hearts. We are called to do justice and love goodness in order to walk humbly with God. Since we are confident that the Father always hears our prayers for reconciliation, together we join in peaceful, non-violent protest, action and prayer for the ban to cure all forms of racism starting today. Please join me in asking our Father for the ban of love, justice, peace, compassion and mercy to end racism and hatred now. In Christ, Archbishop Gregory, Winston Gregory, Archbishop of Washington. Not a good report, is that right then? Um, and you know, I think, uh, Today, you know, so you're looking at a number, a book at home, you know, called Strength to Love, by, written by Martin Luther King, Strength to Love. He used it when I went to seminary many years ago, and it's come back into print. And Martin Luther King talked about the need for hope. He says, even in inevitable moments, when everything seems hopeless, men know that without hope they cannot really live, and in agonizing desperation, they cry out for the bread of hope. He also had something to say about violence. He says, violence by creating many more social problems than it solves never brings permanent peace. So we look at this, you know, and I think this election year is a good year to think about this. Maybe today in our nation there should be a national forum convened to discuss race and race relations, not just among the police force, but among the whole country. Two or three people from each state get together and with that no political affiliation make recommendations and see them, send them through the system and perhaps get them implemented. Now, since John F. Kennedy got arrested in 1963, a lot has changed for the better. 
But let's face it, it's still a long way to go. And, and George Floyd was not the first. We've had several high profile killings. He's been in Baltimore, he's been in Florida, and in New York. And then there's many others too that go back a while. These three come to mind the best they're perhaps the most recent. So I think, you know, today, as a church, uh, we have to, if we don't, if we're not dealing with this um, today, we need we lose credibility. We lose a mandate to, to serve. Christ, let's face it, had time for everybody, regardless of color, creed, or class. And you know, like, uh, if you look at Our Lady's life, Our Lady knew exactly what this is all about. Our Lady was an immigrant. Our Lady was a refugee. Our Lady was rejected. There was no place for her in the inn. Our Lady saw her son die like a criminal on the cross. Um, and in all of that, Our Lady did the right thing. Mary did the right thing. I think the prayer of the rosary to Our Lady is, we do that, and I think Our Lady can take care of the problem. Sometimes we get too comfortable, all of us. We get too comfortable. That this calls for leadership on the part of the, not just the leaders of the country, but the churches. The churches should lead on this, should lead on it, you know. Um, uh, let's face it today, you know, Christ, God made everybody in his image and likeness. And, uh, you know, everybody has got to do the best that they can to try to be an integrated society. I think the military does as good a job as any, integrating people of different cultures and different nationalities. I think in the military it goes pretty good. Um, but out there in civilian life, seems to be very difficult and very problematic. I don't know why. I could never understand it. And, uh, you know, I, I can come from Ireland myself, of course, and we had 30 years of conflict in Ireland. People who were all Christian, all, and they were all white, and they hated each other. And then they realized, you know, we can't go on like this. We can't go on like this. There was a peace deal signed with Doug Mitchell, who, from here, Doug Mitchell, the senator from involved in many years of the peace deal. Things are better, but they're not there yet. The same bigotry is still there. So whether you have religious bigotry or racial bigotry, they're both evil in God's sight, and we all know that. So I'd ask your prayers, you know, uh, you know, these coming weeks, especially, um, you know, uh, ask your prayers that people in charge of, the, of our nation may make the right decisions, may make the right call on this. Um, at the right call, you know, and uh, that, that this cannot be solved just by sending troops in to assist. It's got to start in the human heart. It must start in the human heart. A forum needs to be convened. A forum needs to be convened. We need a forum on immigration. We need a forum on this. And we need a forum on gun violence. And people need to be heard. And changes need to be made. That may be a tall order. This country can do it. It can do anything set their mind to it and that's so important today especially in an election year and when people do vote in November coming up it's not that far away when you look at it you know four or five months people are going to look at the policies of the candidates on this issue and it doesn't matter a cent how much money I'm going to get in my wallet you know if the policy on this is wrong you've got to get the policy on this up front and the policy on, on, you know, the whole abortion thing, right to life, and all of that. Those are the issues today that we have to look at, not just economics. Not just economics. I think sometimes all of us look at economics, right? We promise everything. We promise the sun, moon, and stars, and people will vote them in and get in them, and some of them get some, and some of it doesn't. But to ask Our Lady's help today, I think Mary, who experienced loneliness, homelessness, and rejection, can be a good thing to do. So when you say your rosaries this week, do pray for a solution, a peaceful solution. Not just that things are going to go back to square one, but that leadership will emerge and actually st start the ball rolling to improve the situation of race relations. John Kennedy, God bless him, in 63. Well, that's, that, that, that's right, 50, 60 years ago. We stopped. We went so far on that, and we seem to stop. It needs to restart at every level, from kids up to seniors. And you look at all the young people there, you know, Washington, and it's not just a race thing either. I mean, you look at Washington last night, and <coughs> look at all the young white people that are out there. 
for testing how do you help people people who are appalled by injustice and so uh, I think today, uh, you know, uh, why a policeman was kept down with 14 complaints on his, on his record, kept down in the fort. I mean, something's wrong. And the army once threatened them, the church once threatened a lot. And the army, what did it say, two stripes on a PT test, and three stripes on a PT test, and they're gone. This guy had 14 complaints. And, you know, uh, of course, there's a lot of things we don't know. This uh, the relationship between this policeman and this poor man that was killed, was there a, a relationship between them before it happened? And did they know each other? If they did, then he shouldn't have been dealing with that man. That was an innocent man. Somebody, if the, the man did something wrong, somebody else should have taken the ball and actually got the other stud ball and did nothing. So they wait to see if they're charged. Maybe when they're charged, things will change. Maybe there will be an improvement. Yes, justice has got to be served, um, you know, and, and, and too, like the third category killing. I wonder if there's a, a, a white man that was killed by a black man, would you have a third category killing? I think it would be first class. I'm pretty sure it would be first class. So I think we have to, you know, the, the law has got to be applied fairly across the board. This, you know, change is called for. A systemic change must be called for. From you know, young people up, not just involved in the police, among every strata of society, change has got to be called for. I ask you to do the washer this week. You know, we have the pandemic, the virus is still out there. This thing has pushed the virus off the TV screens. And the virus is still out there. It's a huge problem. Let's not forget the 103,000 people who have lost their lives in the virus. And let's, let's pray that for, our lady's help, for our lady's help at this time. Mary, from not the sister. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us <coughs> trust him in the kindness and mercy. Trust him in your kindness and mercy, O oh God. We bring our prayers to you today. <coughs> For this community of faith that we may enter and open and we may enter and be ever open to the call to place our concerns our needs and our, pr our prayers before God for our refugees and for all who are seeking home we pray to the Lord Lord Amen. hear our prayer for leaders of this nation that we may work to end the situations in other countries but do so for our own country as well, and push people that push people to leave their homes and seek safety in other places and borders. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to gun violence in our streets, for an end to racism in our society, for an end to injustice in our nation, that we may renew our commitment as a people to live and protect the lives of everyone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, especially those here in our own hospital, that they may know your strength and your comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially those who have died from this virus, we pray for all priests who have died from this virus. As we remember their sacrifices and memories, O oh God, we pray that your spirit may bring us fresh members as religious and as priests to serve your church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask our Blessed Mother to intercede with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord, the Lord is, is with thee. Blessed, blessed are thou among women, women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Amen. Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, good and gracious God, Hear these prayers of your people, those spoken and those in our hearts. May we ever be reminded of your love expressed in the community of your spirit. Grant this through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, his Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Bless thou you, Lord God of all creation, that for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, which have become for us the bread of life. Bless thou be God forever. For the mystery of this God, my mind, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to partake in our humanity. <coughs> Thou you, Lord God of all creation, that for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Bless you, O Lord, with your blood. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Trust in your, in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that, purifying, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured the passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna on high. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your blood, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy Bradley our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself, especially the one for whom we offer this Mass. 
remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We remember all our deceased relatives and friends, those who have died recently, those for whom we have been asked to pray, and all the victims of the coronavirus. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord now be with you all. And with your spirit. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not worthy that you, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only, only say the word, and my, and my soul shall be healed. Sacramentally, let's just take a few moments 
to reflect on the Lord's presence in our hearts through spiritual communion. Let's just have a think. <coughs> Let us pray. Grant your faithful people, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow spiritually with life, that they may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts, that we may all merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pass us in the now go in peace. To love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above, O Maria, Hail, Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria, Triumph of each cherubim, Sing with God's ye seraphim. Heaven on earth we sound a hymn. Salve, salve, salve.